Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so two more games left in the season for the Lakers, man. Tonight is one of them. We've got the Memphis Grizzlies at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. And the Memphis Grizzlies are sitting everyone that you've ever heard of on their team. All of them. You name them. If you know who they are, they ain't playing tonight. That's just where it is for the Memphis Grizzlies. They're coming off a loss to the... Who did they play last? Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, you know, it was a lot of uh, Lamar Stevens, a lot of Gigi Jackson, a lot of Scottie Pippen, Trey Jamison. Uh, th those were the guys that you were likely going to see more of tonight. Um, before that, they had lost, I believe, to... I don't remember who they played. San Antonio, possibly, I think it was. Uh, yeah, Wimby had seven blocks. More of the same personnel. So they've been running this personnel for about a week or more. And, um, you know, they're just, they're done with their season. Basically, they're, they're, they're done. Everything that has to do with them is all about the draft at this point. They want to tank as much as they can and get lucky in the draft and hopefully add to their team and then bring back everybody next year and be a real serious contender, which is what I, th I expect. I do expect that, especially with uh, John Morant coming back next season. But for now, it's a whole lot of Gigi Jackson and Scottie Pippen. Even uh, Brandon Clark, I think, is done for the season. He played a couple games, but uh, I think they're going to shelf him from here. <laughs> Free win, L.A., free win. We should have no problem beating this team. I think it would make a lot of sense to continue sitting Anthony Davis if he ain't 100%, sit Braun if he ain't 100%. This is the day where you, you, you send out your hopefuls and you give the ball to Rui Hachimura and you let him go off of Gigi Jackson, and you get the victory, man. Um, rest is probably smarter than running all your stars out there and risking one of them roll an ankle or anything like that. But they are listed as game-time decisions. So we will see what they do. But uh, I, I just, I don't, after losing to the Golden State Warriors, now it's just about being healthy for the play-in tournament game, in my opinion. Everything else is outside of your control. You need Phoenix and Sacramento and Golden State to start losing in order for you to even move out of 10th place, in my humble opinion. I'm not sure mathematically how that looks exactly, but the chances of us moving out of 10 um, into 8th requires Sac and Golden State to both lose games. Uh, New Orleans as well, I believe. So it's a little rough right now. Of course, we got New Orleans in the last game of the season. Uh, but at least we could pick up a free victory tonight unless we just don't want one. That's really how it goes. Unless you just don't desire to win a basketball game, you should be able to beat this tanking G League squad, man. Even if GG goes for 35 points, you should still win. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what it is. Jake LaRavia is somebody you're going to see a lot tonight. He also had a very good game against us last time we saw them. So I expect more confidence from him. Uh, and they got a lot of hopefuls that I've never heard of in my life, man. Guys, I, I have no idea who they are and what they could do. So we're going to learn together tonight uh, about this Memphis team. And maybe one or two of these guys can make a name for themselves since Memphis does such a fantastic job finding talent in, in different areas. So... Yeah, man, this is this is what it is with the, with the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, obviously, the Lakers, we're frustrated. We lost to the Timberwolves and the Golden State Warriors back-to-back -back in must-win games. And if we would have won those games, probably would be fighting for sixth seed. Certain things have shaken out positively if we would have taken care of business. But what does it matter since we did not? Um, that's what it really comes down to, man. I'm already halfway checked out of this season, to be honest with you. I, I'm waiting for these games to end. I'll be watching them. I do expect to win tonight, but I don't think that has anything to do with my my sentiment. You're supposed to beat tonight's Memphis club at all costs. And if you lose to that team, uh, it just further reinforces my frustration. I don't think it would change too much either way, to be honest with you. That's how low in the dumps my sentiment is for where we're at. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, we got a game tonight. So hopefully our... The ones who will be playing will be uh, ready to kind of bounce back and bring and instill some positivity into our morale. Uh, we could use it as a whole fan base and as a club. Um, and we'll see what, what happens. You know, my fear of bringing back Gabe Vincent and how, what that did for our roster 
uh, came to pass, man. It really did. I like Gabe Vincent. I don't have any problem with him isolated by himself. But the way that we've used him, the way that we've tried to reincorporate him into the playoffs, I mean, into the, into the, into the lineup, rather, uh, during these uh, final games, is exactly why I told our team we should sit him for the rest of the season. Because the team is not constructed for him and Spencer did we need to be on it at the same time. We picked up Spencer to replace him. Now you got too many guards. And because Gabe Vincent is a playoff performer or finals performer, Darvin Ham is going to play him as such. Because Darvin, Darvin's brain ain't going to tell him to do nothing smarter than that. He ain't going to tell him that the teammate constructed wasn't envisioned for this type of guard play. He's not he's not gonna he's not gonna use that type of common sense. So as a result, you ended up reincorporating Gabe Vincent back into the lineup and now it shook up the rest of the lineup so that you have bad decisions being made around Gabe Vincent. Now you got the ball coming out of other guards' hands who need it in their hands. It's it's situations where the rotations are smaller than they necessarily would be because of the honor that Coach Ham wants to play Gabe Vincent, even though Gabe Vincent is not ready to be in that situation not physically and not situationally in regards to this team (laughs) this is why I told this team to sit Gabe Vincent for the rest of the season it was no good bringing him back it wasn't necessary based on your vision for your team and what you have and it wasn't best for you in regards to asking Darvin Ham to make good decisions with the rotations here we are and you lost games and I think that had a big to do with it huge to do with it It was just no responsible way for this coach to reincorporate that player into this situation. But people are hard-headed. They want to do what they want to do. And as a result, they get the results that come with that. So that's kind of what has happened over the last two games. Coach has been reincorporating Gabe Vincent into the lineup, and as a result, he's been confused. Not Gabe. Coach has been confused as to who to play and how in that situation. As a result, we've been running lineups out there that basically tank us um, when we can't afford to, given the fact that our stars run out there. If we would have run our rotations properly, I believe we would have won the Minnesota game, and I think we would have had a much better chance at slowing down Golden State, even though they were shooting the ball so very well. So, yeah, that was a a season-taking decision, bringing him back, in my opinion. (laughs) Not to mention he's shooting like 8% from behind the arc. I mean, I like what he's doing defensively and and ball movement-wise. They're much more to basketball than just shooting the ball. But, I mean, it it was foreseeable, the problems. We talked about the problems leading up to the decision to play him, and it it did exactly what I thought it was going to do. Darvin did exactly what I thought he was going to do. So... The good thing about this situation is that uh, we only have two more games before the play-in tournament. If we get, you know, through the play-in tournament, we got a date with the Denver Nugget as, Nuggets as of right now. I don't know if that'll shake up some more. I doubt it. But, um, you know, I just I just have zero faith in, in this situation right now with this team. I have zero faith in Darvin Ham. And I think most of the I'm, – I'm looking to see the body language of the team tonight, see if they've checked out, see if the stars really want to play, see if these role players are checked out. Because I'm, I'm about checked out, man. I'm tired of Darvin Ham's rotations um, making so little sense and having such poor results, man. And so that's really where my mind is going into this Memphis game. I would have fired him after the second time we played Memphis back in January. We were on a four-game losing streak or something like that. That's where we really were hurting. After the play-in tournament, we went on a stretch um, between December and January that that tanked our season, more or less. And he was just doing a bunch of stuff that didn't make any damn sense, just like he's been doing these last two games. It's how we got the notion that this would be possible, that he did these things these last two games, because of what we saw him do leading up to it. So it's like... I'm with the rest of the league, uh, or the Laker nation, most of us anyway, where we just hope beyond hope that Jeannie Buss will just fire this coach at the end of the season so that common sense can reincorporate itself back into what it is that we do. You know, and, and a healthy fear for what goes wrong when you do things the wrong way. 
and uh that's really what it comes out to man i'm i don't care about this game too much to be honest with you i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna give you guys what i have but darvin's last two performances have dejected my entire mindset as it pertains to this team um for this season man i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm already looking in the draft picks man hopefully new orleans give us our draft pick uh, if we, especially if we find ourselves getting a lottery pick, um, that's where my head is, man. If we get kicked out of the play-in tournament by either Sacramento or Golden State. Um, I won't even be upset because I know that that leads to Darvin getting the hell up out of here. And it leads to us likely getting a uh, lottery pick, given the fact that New Orleans seems to want to defer uh, to next season in regards to taking the pick that, that we're owing them. So I'm looking forward to the, to, the, to the draft, to be honest with you. And if the Lakers happen to win uh, the play-in tournament, it becomes a situation where I'm looking up and I'm seeing Denver. I'm like, bro, I'd rather get the hell out of here now and get my lottery pick than make the playoffs just to get swept by Denver. You understand what I'm saying? Just to win maybe one game against Denver. I'd rather lose in the play-in tournament and get the lottery pick instead of letting that pick go to like 17, 18, 19, 20 outside of the lottery because at least with the lottery, you got a chance of something great happening. You you likely, it, the lottery usually stays pat, you know, whoever you expect to get 14, 13, 12, 11, probably till about nine or eight is when you start seeing one of those nine or eight teams shake it to the this, to this top three or something like that. So chances are you will get like the 14th pick or 13th pick or something like that in the lottery, one of the last lottery picks. But like, that could be a good player. For us, especially since we have specific needs, center needs, you might get Zach Eady or something if you want him, or you know you might be able to get a really nice player. Ron Holland might be still available. They got some good players in that range. And, or you could trade the pick, and it's much more valuable if it's a lottery pick, obviously. So I just think the asset's more important than getting bounced by the Denver Nuggets. Bro, I don't care to see Jokic and uh, and and. and um, and Coach Malone continue to daddy this dude, man. I'm t- I don't care to see that. Now, if we could avoid them and see t- the Timberwolves or the or the, or the OKC Thunder in in the in the great event that we're able to overcome the two teams that we can't beat, Golden State and Sacramento, that would be awesome. You know, I would love to to see that. But if for some reason Golden State drops the game against us and then we somehow beat the Sacramento Kings or however it shakes out only for us to see Denver just to diminish the pick that we're given I mean it only makes sense if New Orleans wants to take the pick from us then it's like all right let's take our chances to the playoffs see if we could have a moral victory or two against the Denver Nuggets otherwise if we're gonna get the pick I want a better pick I don't care about this getting dropped by the Denver Nuggets in the first round personally that doesn't move me in any positive way you know so I just I don't know man I'm thinking about the future I, I this season is a wash to me y'all I don't I don't have any faith in this team doing anything good even though I like the players I think the coach is in the way I think he gonna do something that that's gonna tank us just like he's been doing for the last two games just like he's been doing for the last 80 games so that's where I'm at, man. Low morale, not very happy. Obviously, we got a bad team to, to beat up on tonight. Hopefully, we'll decide to show up for this one. Uh, hopefully, we'll make good decisions with our personnel so that guys can be healthy going into the tournament. And we'll give it our shot, man. But between me and you, I'd rather have the lottery picked than to go forward what looks likely. And us getting dog walked by the same damn team that always dog walks us. I'd rather not, man. I really would. So, yeah, man. This is this is it. This is where we're at. Now the team has to try to win us all back. That's really what it comes down to. They beat the Memphis Grizzlies tonight. Go into New Orleans. Beat them. Go into Golden State or whoever you go see. If it's Sacramento, go in there and get a victory for a change. Um, and then go into Denver and, and somehow get some more victories, man. Hopefully, you know, make a series out of it. But uh, all of that looks extremely unlikely to me, man. I'm just, I just have no faith after what I've seen these last two games specifically. I, I'm just waiting for Darwin to do something to ruin it, bro. I'm just being honest.
So that's where my head is, man. Memphis is bad. They're running a bunch of G-leaguers. It's a GG Jackson night. I expect him and LaRivia to be the top scorers. And that's going to be fine. But, uh, you know, we'll watch it and see what happens. But uh, the Lakers tonight are going to be wearing yellow. And the uh, Memphis Grizzlies are going to be wearing their black uniforms with the hieroglyphic-like uh, lettering on the front of it, just like last time. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's a good watch. Hopefully it's a good watch, man. I, I don't know, bro. I don't know. If y'all check out my rants and some of the conversations we've had, you'll see where my head is. I'm already in off-season mode, bro. I'm serious. And now I'm thinking about the best possible asset. If, if New Orleans wants to take the pick, then let's get on in the playoffs and do our best. If New Orleans doesn't and they give it to us, uh, it's probably in our best interest to get the hell out of here sooner than later and make sure that's a lottery pick, man. That's, that's it. That's it. It's about the future, bro. Everything else... If this team was going to do something, man, they would have um, they, they would have shown up better in these last two games, man, to be honest with you. And that's just how I'm looking at it. If they were serious, if they were serious as a unit, we would have seen a better product over the last two games. But those were must-win games, and that played out the way it did, man. And everybody got a lot of excuses and got a, you know, a lot of reasons, and it's a lot of over with. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel, bro. So, off-season mode for me. I hope everybody enjoys this game. Hopefully, you're more optimistic and more, you know, enthusiastic than I am. But uh, I, I don't. I don't. I, I'm, I'm tired of this crap. I am. This was an awful, awful season. And I just want these last two games to end so we can get in the playing tournament and face our fate, whatever it's going to be. My name is BDL44. I thank y'all for watching. I'm out.